Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and break it down in bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, I'm buying. And I'm buying into crypto for a couple of different reasons. And we're going to go over some of these in the articles that we have today. So first up, hedge funds see the crypto market decline as an investment opportunity. We're going to take a look at uh, different hedge funds and what they're actually doing. And we're going to hear from the CEO of Avalanche. On top of that, uh, we've got a nice little story which talks about how JP Morgan, yes, those guys, and UBS plan to onboard active cryptocurrency strategies, which is kind of odd considering that just a couple of days ago, uh, UBS advises to stay clear of crypto, and that's what they're telling uh, their investors, and uh, not to be undone. And just as a reminder, JP Morgan was convicted or is forced to pay $920 million for spoofing the precious metals market. So these are the types of uh, individuals and institutions and entities that are getting into our space. So if you don't think there's a little bit of a hanky-panky and a little craziness going on, uh, you got another thing coming. And then lastly, we'll take a look at what's going on with uh, Bitcoin amounts being moved off exchanges, and that's a potential sign of price surge. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is the uh, 13th of July, I believe, 14th of July, <laughs> and it's about uh, 11 a.m. here. And uh, look, uh, once again, we see the market in a just kind of chopping sideways. 1.35 trillion, it's down 0.44%, not a big deal. Um, and we're gonna move sideways throughout July. Actually, I see uh, more of a decline coming, but that's just my uh, investment opinion, not investment advice. I just see some uh, some more volatility, which means in volatility, as its uh, name suggests, you're gonna go down and you're gonna go up. And that's uh, kind of what I see happening, a lot more volatility. And I would think that Ethereum would actually increase with that EIP 5059, but right now it's just hanging above 2000 and uh, everything is just either moving sideways or down a little bit, except for Uniswap, down 5%, but they had a pretty big run. Actually, they're down 20% for the week. Ugh. That's not so great. And then uh, let's take a look at anything as far as the projected range for sentiment analysis. We are looking at uh, Trade the Chain, link in the description, check that out. So if you're a big trader, um, take a look Ugh. between negative 16 and plus 32 in the next hour and plus nine, plus 10. Look at these, Bridge Oracle, Green Power, Augur, Harvest Finance, and Linear. And that's all I can really say. I'm not a big trader, but uh, that's what we got. Let's, uh, what we should do is let's just jump in today's top stories. Where we talk about smart money insights. And I'll use this term very loosely, smart money insights, but these are people that just, they are in the realm of finance and they're doing a lot of different things as far as like uh, with clients and, and uh, getting investments and doing all sorts of, of uh, uh, financial advising. So when I take a look at what's going on, I kind of start to look at what is smart money, not what they're saying, because we know we're, we're getting that a little bit, but what they're doing. So this one, hedge funds see the market as a uh, investment opportunity as things decline. And that's really what it comes down to. Really what how I see the market is the same way as these guys see the market. I see this decline as a chance to just accumulate and just a dollar cost average just to keep going. I know people get sick of it, but you know when you don't get sick of it? When everything goes bare pollock. When everything goes parabolic, just like it did in, in 2013, just like it did in 2017, just like it's probably gonna do around 2021, end of, or maybe next year, who knows? Uh, that's when you're gonna thank yourself. And there is no there is no easy pass. And this is just, to me, this is just only makes sense. Uh, that's all I can wait to tell you. So let's just dig into it. First of all, who wrote this article? Uh, Osato Avan Nomayo. And if you don't follow this guy, um, you're gonna see why you should in a bit. Did a great article here. So what's going on? Back in June, a survey of 100 chief financial officers at hedge funds across the world indicated an expected increase in crypto exposure for hedge funds in the next five years. Again, if you're looking for like, it's gonna happen tomorrow, that's not the case. And to say that it's gonna happen in the next five years, they're just saying that there's an overall increase over the next five years, in the next five years. So. Uh, that's just a part of the equation. Hedge funds, either they're going to get it early or they're going to get it late. But at some point, they're going to get it. And then to move on, uh, in July, London-based hedge fund giant Marshall Wace, I think I nailed it, was set to create an investment portfolio focused on digital assets. The 55 billion hedge fund was looking toward late-stage funding for digital finance companies and blockchain outfits, working on use cases such as payment systems. Uh, whatever you want to say for that as far as crypto payment system, leave the comment in the description below for digital currencies and stable coins. 
Marshall Weiss had made some forays into the digital asset space. Back in May, the hedge fund participated in USD coin stablecoin issuer Circle's 440 million fundraising round. So every different institution or entity starts to dip their toes into it a different way. Either they jump fully in or they start to back other companies that are into cryptocurrency, such as Circle and USDC. In July, Cornell University professor and Avalanche creator, uh, Emin Gunn Sear, I, I don't I hope I said that right, stated that the current market downturn had done little to dampen enthusiasm for crypto exposure among institutional investors. Uh, according to him, the legitimacy of crypto as an asset class is beyond question. He states this, I've been getting contacts from retirement funds, not hedge funds, but retirement funds. Very different piece, far more slower moving, but with maybe 10 times more dollars under their control and they are slowly coming into crypto. It's uh, wish they get here a little bit faster, but they still have to do their due diligence. Joe D. Pasquale, CEO of crypto hedge fund Bitbull Capital, states institutional investors are still interested and continue to build positions at key support levels. Naturally, the market hype has dampened. I think we've all seen that. But these downturns have been historically opportune moments for long term entries. And that's just really what it comes down to. So some people, when they see these things, they go, ah, oh, man, everything's going down. So this is just awful. It's awful if you make it awful. And for me, when I just, because I can't give you advice. I, I'm not an investment advisor. But when I see these, the, the whole dips, I'm like, this is the time to buy. And then when things go up, I can, if I need to, implement a strategy to where I sell off a little bit. I'm not going to hold my crypto forever. Why? because I can't buy everything with it. Now I can do loans and things like that. I've done that with Celsius. It's great, uh, worked out pretty well, bought a condo. Uh, you know, what can I say about it? It worked out great and there's no capital gains tax because it is a loan. But at some point you wanna maybe diversify and do different things. So for me, like I see these opportunities right now as these big dips and lulls, chances to accumulate. But again, that's just how I do things and my goals are not your goals. And then to continue, a uh, spokesman for Nickel Digital Asset Management, $200 million crypto hedge fund states this, we are seeing active and continuous engagement from the entire institutional com community, including pensions, foundations, endowments, and funds of hedge funds. He also states recent volatility has proved to be an opportunity for certain trading, stra for certain trading strategies like market neutral arbitrage, while being a headwind for others, beta exposure to underlying crypto assets. I don't do the arbitrage type of thing. I know people can make a ton of money, but that's not my deal. Uh, Nickel Digital recently rebalanced its cash position as a result of the current market decline and a move the company described as an exercise in financial discipline. And this is what I really wanna drive home real quick. All that talk about diamond hands and holding on forever is garbage, it's nonsense. And when people would always tell me, I remember in uh, March, April, May, people were telling me like, Rob, you're just a relic and you don't get it because these institutions are here and they're not gonna sell. And I was like, oh really? Well, guess what? They've been selling like crazy and that's just the truth of, of it. So when I talk about that, what they're saying here is that this was uh, the, the same thing, the hedge fund rebalances cash position. This was on July 2nd. Uh, also written by o o Osato. And it states here, crypto hedge fund, nickel digital asset management, cycled into a cash position following the crypto market collapse of May. And then to further reiterate what's happened here, uh, they state uh, uh, nickel digital has put its flagship arbitrage strategy fund largely into cash after the recent collapse of one of the cryptocurrencies market most reliable trades. 200 million hedge fund run by alumni from Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan this is what they did. Uh, the basis trade where crypto investors, including nickel digital profit from discrepancies between spot and future prices had become a reliable double digit annual return. Pretty good. Until it was upended in May, the dramatic sell off saw a number of leveraged positions, mostly held by retail investors flushed out. They estimated that the amount of auto liquidations of speculative positions on May 19th alone was around 9 billion. I think it was actually more like 11 billion, somewhere around there. Check me in the comment section, but it was a ton. And that is another thing that uh, I just don't understand why some people do these leverage positions. If you know what you're doing, sure, great, have at it. 50X, 100X, all, all day long, I care less. But that's a very few amount of people that actually do that. I think what's really going on here is retail's going, I can make a lot of money and uh, this is my lottery ticket. And they do that and like, all my money's gone. Crypto's awful and crypto's a scam. It's not a scam. You don't know, you just know what you're doing. And that's really what it comes down to. I'm sorry, that's just how it goes. So uh, good learning lesson for you, I suppose or whoever. And if it is, I, I could say, I'm sorry, you lost your money, but it's still a learning experience.
All right, so to finish this up, as more institutional players make crypto forays, stakeholders say asset managers are not worried about regulatory risks. Meanwhile, banks and other regulated entities seem to be getting clear mandates from regulatory bodies to interact with digital assets. And again, Nickel Digital spoke and said this, we embrace regulation because we feel that regulation brings clarity and clarity brings broader market participation. Crypto has had years of regulation in the US and the recent changes in Germany can unlock billions of dollars into the crypto space. And then to, to what he's talking about here was there was an article about uh, Germany law and what is going on. Uh, it's allowing 450 billion investment into crypto and the law allows special funds to invest up to 20% of their assets into crypto itself. So that's what they're saying. Like, look, the money's there. It's just taking a little bit of time to get here. And then this is the, I think, uh, the more hopeful of the article. Bulls will return, will return in the fall. If the current crypto downturn offers a premium investment opportunity for hedge funds and other institutional investors, such as a strategy, most likely relies on the expectation of a market bounce in the future. Uh, Sirer, CEO of Avalanche, has predicted that sideways accumulation will dominate the crypto price action. That's exactly what we're doing right now. He uh, expects a return to the upward parabolic price trajectory in Q4. I will be there for that, October, November, December. According to the Avalanche founder, the expected resurgence should begin in October or November. He states, I'm really excited about what's to come because I know that there is so much interest in institutional retail, as well as in the new technology that is poised to change the world. And bear market is actually great getting work done. The transformation of finance isn't going to stop because we hit a relative price correction. So that's really what, it, that was a very long article, I must admit, but it really all comes down to this. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And when people say that, you know, this is just gonna go to zero and it's gonna fall off, it's not, that's my personal. I just think that we're gonna, we're in that time right now, what they talked about, this accumulation phase. And if you don't wanna accumulate, you wanna sell out, then that's your prerogative, get out, uh, it's okay. Like I said, that diamond hands, uh, stone hands things is ridiculous. Do what's best for you and your family after you've done all the research and all the things that uh, you're supposed to do and your due diligence and just move. Uh, but if you're like me, uh, I just see a lot of opportunity in the future and that's why I'm still accumulating heavily and we'll see if I'm right. And uh, I can't tell you when it's gonna happen. I can just tell you that uh, I just believe that at some points uh, we are gonna see a massive price run. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece where we talk about JP Morgan and UBS. This is a quick one. And it just comes out of this. JP Morgan UBS plan to onboard active strategies. What is this? So the street reported that JP Morgan UBS are currently carrying out their due diligence with crypto hedge funds. Another sign of Wall Street's involvement in crypto. In May, Wells Fargo announced that its investment unit would introduce an active strategy for its deep pocketed crypto clients, i.e. all the people with a bunch of money. And the onboarding of crypto strategies will take place through the bank's fund of fund units, which uh, they're, those are pooled investment funds that primarily invest in the shares of other funds instead of equities, bonds, and other assets. So they probably mix a bunch of different things as far as crypto and other stuff because uh, the main advantage is you get a big diversification, but you don't take a lot of risk. So that sounds pretty good for a lot of different people. In April, there were media reports about JP Morgan launching a Bitcoin fund this summer due to client demand. And when there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. I guarantee, I can't guarantee, I strongly believe that this is what's gonna happen. And UBS, the biggest Swiss bank, started exploring ways to offer cryptocurrencies to its affluent clients this May. Uh, Wall Street remains generally skeptical of crypto. Earlier today, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink told CNBC that there was very little demand for crypto, which is kind of funny because now you got JP Morgan and UBS. Uh, here's the article from uh, The Street itself, which goes on and, and talks about uh, you know the same thing we just said. JP Morgan and UBS are exploring blockchain, backing portfolio managers that actively trade crypto. And again, I find that very odd because UBS, even in May, they were talking about, you know, we should get these types of things for our affluent clients, our big money players. But uh, they put out a press release and said, hey, stay clear of crypto because regulators will crack down. Okay. And uh, that's just great for a lot of their clients because they can get it at a very much lower price and do that. And also don't forget uh, our friends over at JP Morgan uh, just settled about a year ago 
uh, for an undisclosed amount, uh, a lawsuit that accused the firm of spoofing trades in the precious metals market. The suit was by hedge fund manager Daniel Schack and two commodities traders who accused JP Morgan of manipulating the silver futures market, costing plaintiffs 30 million in losses. The bank is also nearing a settlement of 920 million to resolve government investigations for similar alleged conduct in the precious metals and treasury futures market. And what they do is they, you know, they, they spoof the market. They put a big large order in, and then uh, they, but they have no ambition to actually fill it. And it will drive the price up or drive the price down, depending on what they want to do. So when people talk about how there's no manipulation in this market, ah, there's tons of manipulation in all markets. So don't give me that. That's ridiculous. Now, can I say it's 15% of the market is being manipulated or 35 or 70%. I have no idea, but I can say manipulation is alive and well. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our last piece where we talk about what's going on with Bitcoin being shuffled around. So I can just sum it up like this. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, users are beginning, be began to withdraw Bitcoin from exchanges, refusing to sell at the current price of 33,000. And they think that it's going from uh, the wallets or from the uh, exchanges to cold wallets. And this is where it really comes down to. This is from Glassnode. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Yeah. So see this little area right here? All this, all this green means that uh, people are actually adding Bitcoin into the exchanges. So you can see like when, when the price was really going up, people took it off the cold storage which is all, all in the red, they started to put it onto the exchanges. And when you put things on exchanges from cold storage, it means you're going to sell, usually. And that's exactly what happened. People sold like crazy. And that happened, and then the price dropped pretty dramatically. And now we're back into the same thing here, where people are moving it from the exchanges into their cold storage wallets. And then when you see that, it's not a, a definitive indicator that the price is going to go up, but it's a pretty good indicator. Uh, and you can see it right here. Uh, in the middle parts and, in, and then to the right, and especially in these big, huge red areas all the way to the right here. As soon as everybody starts to move it off, you see the price go up. And that's just one thing. So that could mean potentially that there's a uh, some good news on the horizon. That's really all I got for you today. So look, I know it was a little bit longer. There's a lot of things going on. And it, it, it doesn't, it's not so much about what's happening today, what's happening next week. It's always about the long-term view. If, you know, if, if there's somewhere like you're like, I need money now, then again, diamond hands and stone hands, and all that stupid stuff, just do what's best for you and then, and then go from there. But uh, right now I'm just accumulating and trying to accumulate as much as possible because I see a big, huge hockey stick parabolic run coming up. Now, can I say it's going to happen tomorrow? No. Or next week? No. Or three months, six months, 10 months? I have no idea. I have my theories and no one nobody out there can tell you exactly when because nobody's nostradamus but uh just uh, use your best uh, judgment and go from there so look if you like today's video give it a thumbs up give it a like also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about obviously are very time sensitive and that's it for today so thanks so much for watching i appreciate it i'll see you on the next one